Okay, so let's go on to example, next example, and I think it's example three. And now we're going to keep on writing an equation for the line in point float form. Um, write an equation in point float form for the line passing through the points 4, negative 3, and negative 2, 6. See the figure, then solve the equation for y. Now this problem is different from example 2 than we just finished in the last video because um, they gave me a slope in example 2. They said slope was 4 and they gave me a point. Now in this example 3, they don't give me a slope. All I do is give me two points. But remember, we can find slope. Um, we know how to find slope if we're given two points. So we can do the opposite side. We can say m equals, <clears throat> then here's x1, y1, x2, y2, and, or vice versa, whatever one you want to call it. And I'm going to get negative 3 minus 6 all over 4 minus a negative 2, which is negative 3 minus 6 over 4 plus 2. I get negative 9 over 6. And remember that if you have a fraction, um, you can always do reduce it if you need to. So this is the same thing as negative 3 over 2. And there's a slope. Now if you want to verify this, and again, normally they don't give you this graph here. I'm going to verify it. Notice how if I look at the leftmost point, I go down 1, 2, 3, to the right, 1, 2, and I'm back on that line. That's another point on the line. So this slope actually makes sense. If I hadn't reduced it, I would have gone down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm back on the line anyway. So either way, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, that would be a point on the line right there. Okay. So now I have enough information I can do the point slope formula. So here is the formula. Okay. And so I go ahead and put this in for m, and I pick a uh, x1 and y1. So I have y minus a negative 3 equals negative 3 halves x minus 4. The same thing as y plus 3 equals negative 3 over 2 x minus 4. And that's the point slope form where they want me to solve for y. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute this. So I get y plus 3 equals negative 3 over 2 x this gives me plus because the negative times the negative is positive. And you can use your um, ABC button on your calculator. Negative 3 ABC 2 times um, negative 4 or um, 3 half times 4 if you already know it's positive. Um, but that should give you 6. Oh, not 6, but um, 6. So here I get um, 12 over 2, that's a 6. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. So I get y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 3. There's my equation solved for y. Now you notice that I picked um, 4, negative 3 when I used my point, but it didn't really matter which point we picked for example 3. And let's see if that does matter. So here I have my point slope form for line. And the slope is going to be the same no matter, um, no matter what because um, I can switch these points around. I still have the same slope. That will stay the same. So I go ahead and plug in the negative 3 halves here. My question is, does it matter which point I pick? And I'm going to go ahead and pick the other point. So I'm going to use this point instead. Okay, so I have y minus 6 and then x minus a negative 2. That gives me y minus 6 equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. And then I'm going to solve for y. So I get y minus 6 equals negative 3 halves x. And this will give me a negative because negative times positive is negative. And I can use my calculator. I can reduce my head. And I get um, minus 3, so negative 3. And then I'm going to go ahead and add 6 to both sides. So I get y equals negative 3 half x plus 3. So it looks like I get the same um, equation for y no matter which point I use. So it did not matter. So uh, just pick one point, and if you really want to, you can do the other point. Okay. Now um, I kind of allude to this. The slope intercept form of an equation of a line is y equals mx plus 
plus b. m represents your slope, and b represents your y-intercept, which is the point 0, comma b. Remember, all y-intercepts have 0 for the x value. If I want to graph the linear function f of x equals negative 3 hat x plus 2, remember that same thing as y equals negative 3 over 2 x plus 2. That same thing. Okay? This is going to be your slope. So slope is negative 3 over 2. And the y-intercept is 2 or 0, 2. So first, we're going to graph the y-intercept, or plot the y-intercept. Okay. So when we do that, we get this point right here. Okay. Then we're going to move from this point. by the slope. Remember, slope tells me how to get to another point on the line. So this tells me down 3 to the right 2. So from here, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and to the right 2, 1, 2. So that point would be right there. So I had a point right there. And again, down 1, 2, 3, to the right, 2. And if you keep on going down 1, 2, 3, to the right, 2, it'll be another point right there. Okay? So that would be the line. We're graphing that linear function. Again, you have a ruler through your line, will be a little bit better looking than mine. Okay, so here we want to graph uh, y equals negative 4 in the rectangle coordinate system. And notice how there's no x in here. So if I were to make a table, we actually had this in the, the first, first chapter, and y'all, um, some of y'all in class, if you were in my class, you asked me um, what was going on. So I can put in any value in for x. Y is always going to be negative 4, is what it's telling me. So I get 0, negative 4, 1, negative 4, 2, negative 4, 3, negative 4, 4, negative 4, etc. What happens if I plot those points? Here's 0, negative 4, 1, negative 4, 2, negative 4, 3, negative 4, 4, negative 4. I would get a horizontal line. Okay. So my hint to you is if you have. only one variable that they'll hint and I'll fill that out in just a second. So let's do the other way around. What if I had x equals 2? I'm going to make a little table here. x, y, and x comma y. And it's saying x equals 2. So 2, 2, 2, 2. And y can be whatever you want. So 0, 1, 2, 3. 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3. So 2, 0 would be right here. 2, 1 would be right there. 2, 2 would be right there. 2, 3 would be right there. And you're going to note that I have a vertical line. Okay? So the hint is, if you have only one variable, the hint is you will have either a horizontal line or a vertical line. Some people memorize it and they memorize if you have y equals a number they're going to have a horizontal line. And some people memorize it if you have x equals a number you can have a vertical line. But I'll tell my students that if I, if I forget I just make a little table and just start putting in values. Go to example 7, and we want to find the slope and the y-intercept of the line whose equation is 3x plus 2y minus 4 equals 0. If you want to find the slope and the y-intercept, you want y equals mx plus b, because we know this is our slope, and that's the y-intercept. So we're going to solve for y here. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. 
I get 2y minus 4 equals negative 3x. If I add 4 to both sides, I get 2y equals negative 3x plus 4. And then divide both sides by 2. I get y equals negative 3x plus 4 over 2. And then I separate them. I get y equals negative 3 half x plus 2. Okay. So the slope is negative 3 over 2. And the y-intercept is... 2 or 0, 2. Now in your um, my math lab work, they might just ask for the 2, but on the exam, I'm going to want the 0, 2 also. Okay. Let's go to the next example, and let's talk about what a general form of equation is. An equation is written in general form when it is written as ax plus by plus equals 0. A, B, and C are real numbers, and A and B are not zero. What that means is basically all your stuff is on one side and you have zero on the other side. Okay. Use an intercept to graph linear equation. Um, remember that we talked about this, um, I want to say, in the beginning of this chapter, we talked about intercepts. Remember, all x-intercepts have zero as the y value, and all y-intercepts have zero as the x value. So if we're trying to find the x-intercept, we want to go ahead and plug in 0 in for y there. So I get 4x minus 3 times 0 minus 6 equals 0. That gives me 4x minus 6 because this right here is 0. This drops out. Equals 0. Add 6 to both sides. So I get 4x equals 6. Divide by 4, so I get x equals 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. And what I come up with is I come up with the ordered pair for the x-intercept. 3, 2 is your x value, and what is your y value? Well, remember, I put in 0 for y, so that's going to be my y value there. Okay. To find the y-intercept, very similar. All you're going to do is plug in 0 now in for x. So I get 4 times 0 minus 3y minus 6 equals 0. So I get negative 3y minus 6 equals 0. And this drops out because that's just 0. Add 6 to both sides. So I get negative 3y equals 6. Divide by negative 3. I get y equals negative 2. So my y value is negative 2. And remember, I put in 0 for x. That goes right there. So I get... 3, 3 over 2 is 1 and 1 half, so 1 and 1 half, 0 is going to be right there. And 0 and negative 2 is right there. And I draw a line. There's my line. Now, this is called the intercepts method. Very important. We are going to find intercepts throughout the semester. And what you're basically doing is plugging in 0 for y to find the x-intercept. So I get 0 for x to find the y, or 0 for x to find the y-intercept. And this will be true no matter what the equation looks like. Um, it might not always be a line. It could be a parabola. It could be um, a polynomial equation. And so and a lot of times students on the exam will forget to do this method and they'll do something else. But I really want to make sure you understand the intercept method and, um, and, and you're just plugging in 0 for either x or y. Okay, I have about 50 seconds left, so what I want to do is I want you to go ahead and pause the video and do these problems on your own, and then go ahead and, and um, when you get done, replay the video and you check your answers. Okay, so I put ahead and <clears throat> work this out for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of scroll through this. And um, for number one, I got 6 for A, and then B, I got negative 7 fifths, and I did it multiple ways in case um, you did it differently. On number two, I got these two formulas right here and here. And three, I did it all different ways. However, you found the slope, however, you found the point. And number four, and five, and six, and seven. So you need to pause the video.